Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about medical bills. I'll start with some tips on how to prevent the bills in the first place and also give some tips on how to fight or minimize the bills. Obviously, if you don't have health insurance and you get sick, your expectation is that some type of bill will arrive to you shortly thereafter, you receive medical care. However, you can receive a medical bill even if you have health insurance. See, insurance doesn't cover everything, nor it should, otherwise it would be very, very expensive. The idea of having health insurance is that you can transfer some of the risk to the insurance company while being responsible for some of the costs. When you sign up for health insurance, you are entering into a contract with the insurance carrier. It is very important to know what your health insurance covers and what is your responsibility in order to avoid paying excessively for your medical bills. It is worth to mention that medical bills sometimes contain, contain errors. If you know your coverage, you will be able to spot those errors easily. Also, it makes sense to request an itemized bill in case the invoice does not clearly state for what you are being charged. Besides, you want to make sure you actually got all the services you are being charged for. When it comes to medical costs, you have virtually no say in what hospitals and doctors will charge you. It's not like going into a store where you can choose to buy shoes from Nordstrom, Amazon or from Walmart. Hospitals and doctors charge whatever they want and rarely if ever explain what the costs are ahead of time, especially if this is an emergency. However, you definitely want to make sure your doctor or provider is in network before scheduling the visit, even if you have a PPO plan. Most health plans have a network, a group of doctors, hospitals, and other healthcare providers who agree to take your insurance rate. Some plans may not cover any services you get from providers who are not in network. In case you've received that first jaw-dropping heart attack provoking bill from the hospital or doctor, you can do the following. First, if you have insurance, immediately give the bill to your insurance company. If you do not have insurance, immediately send a letter disputing the bill. If you receive a notice to pay a large balance after insurance has paid a small portion of the bill, send a letter disputing the bill as excessive and enclose a copy of the bill that they sent you. It is very important to act quickly. The reason this is so important is that it stops the hospital doctor and subsequent collection agencies who may buy the debt from claiming what is called an account stated. An account stated means that you were provided with one or more bills and did not dispute them. It is one of those very rare times in law that silence is deemed to be consent. In other words, if you do not dispute it, a court may automatically hold for the doctor or hospital based solely on the fact that you did not dispute it. Okay, so in case nothing works and you got that bill, you verify that all the charges are legit, so now you have to pay it. Well, not so fast. You can still negotiate and ask for a discount. Hospital billing departments are often eager to collect something and get the charges off their books, rather than deal with the lengthy collection costs. You may ask to pay a part of the bill immediately, for example, let's say 40% of the bill, and ask the provider to write off the rest. This is a great strategy. Even if your offer is rejected, the hospital may counter offer, let's say, a 50-50 deal, which is still a better than of paying the bill in full. If you can't reach an agreement with a provider, consider hiring a professional. There are few non-profit organizations or professional patient advocates that can bargain for you. They typically charge a percentage of the reduction they negotiate. Here are some organizations that can help. In case your debt was forwarded to the collection agency, well, collection agencies want you to believe that they, and not you, are holding all the cards. They want you to believe that you must talk to them and must accept what they say you owe. This is not true. You are protected by federal and state law. Here's what you may do when you receive a call or letter from a debt collector. Collector, First, make sure that they clearly tell you their name, the name of their company, their consumer fair license number, and their address before you have any conversation with them. If they try to cut you off or ask you questions before giving you this information, tell them that you will not speak to them until you are given that information. If this is the first call from a collection agency and they have not yet mailed you anything, insist that they mail you a notice before you speak with them. 
Also, never give out your personal information, date of birth, work, cell phone number, names, credit card and bank information over the phone to a debt collector. Always send a demand for verification. Collection agencies can sometimes be aggressive and may often break the laws to protect you from them. If this letter is sent within 30 days of your receiving letter from a debt collector, they cannot take any further action against you, including calling you until they have verified the debt. Make sure you keep a notebook of all calls and letters that you receive from and send to the creditor and collection agencies. You can try to work out a payment arrangement with the debt collection agency if you choose. Again, this is best done in writing rather than over the phone. If you know any other strategies on how to handle medical bills, please feel free to share it by commenting under the video. As always, thanks for watching! Love this video? Don't forget to share your happiness with your friends. And please, please support us by subscribing to our channel. Let's talk money.